We're going to go quickly into our word this morning. We've got some men that are going to share testimonies. Stay on your feet for me for just one second. Pull up Joshua chapter 1, verse number 9 in the New King James Version. Let's read this together on the count of three. One, two, three, read. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. Amen. Give God one more clean clap of praise as you take a seat. I want to put in a real quick plug again for First Wednesday Ignite. Anybody excited about First Wednesday? I'm going to try that again. Uh, one thing about fire, when you, um, when you it, it, it just takes a little bit of kindling to start a flame. And if we got um, just one or two people in each section that can be excited about First Wednesday, man, that flame can start throughout this whole building. Is there anybody excited about First Wednesday? Let me help you all. Let me help somebody. Let me, let, me go, let me go off script just for a minute on first Wednesday. The first Wednesday in March. How many months ago was that? Somebody do the math quick. Seven, seven months ago. The first Wednesday in March. There was a mother that was here with her child. And that mother didn't know what to do anymore with her baby. Because her baby was having seizures. He's 15 years old. They had just recently got a doctor's report that there was a hole in the back of his skull. Picture that. I'm not talking about a, 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 a flesh puncture that you go get stitches. A hole in the back of his skull and his brain is starting to leak out of his head. But they came down to the altar and they received prayer and they received the manifestation of their healing. And that boy now is back playing basketball and riding his bike and he just recently got a job and he's taking trips and he's working and serving in the house of God. He knows who his redeemer is. Why? Because of a first Wednesday at night. There's other people in this ministry that's been coming on First Wednesday and receiving the power of the testimonies of what others have been sharing. So you decide. It's your choice. I've made the decision for me and my family. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will chase God. As for me and my house, we will honor the Lord. And as we're doing it, we will achieve or we will receive every spiritual blessing that God has bestowed to our family in heaven. So we've decided. You got to decide. It's a choice. It's a choice. So first Wednesday, I want to encourage you to come out. It's a powerful time in the presence of God. We keep it fresh. Um, the Holy Spirit keeps it fresh. So come out. This morning, I'm going to let you in to a little bit of what happened um, at the men's encounter. But you all know what happens in encounter what? stays in an encounter so I can't let you in on all of it but I think there's some nuggets there's some remnant of what God um, is doing in our midst that it would be irresponsible of me to not balance out um, what he lost and initiated with 41 men this weekend you heard it. I said 41 men this weekend. 41 men. Not 41 boys. 41 men. Hallelujah. When God started the world, he started it with what? A man. 
When God started in Genesis chapter 1, when God said, he said, let us make man. When he started the world, he started it with the man. And the devil literally has been after men ever since the beginning. But hallelujah, when God saves a man, the whole family can get saved. Hallelujah. When a man is redeemed, the whole family is positioned to be redeemed. Why is that? Because, because men set the course of real men, strong men. Men with a foundation of Jesus Christ. They set the course of what happens in their household. They're the ones that set the climate of what happens in the house. Women are equally significant. I don't want to leave that out. But this morning, right now, I'm talking about strong men. Strong men have the power to set the climate and the course inside of their homes. And strong men don't advocate that responsibility. They step up to the charge. And heaven knows that I wish it could be like this. In all houses. But the reality of the situation in families, it, it, it's just, it doesn't exist this way today. But I believe. Let me sober you with the reality of the situation today. Men all across this world are committing suicide. They're choosing to quit. They're checking out. Bring that slide up for me. Men all across this world, they're checking out at an all-time high. See, we talk about it, but I want you to see it. I want it to resonate in your, in your mind. In your, I want you to see it. That men are checking out all-time high. Men die by suicide three and a half times more, off, more often than women. On average, there are 121 suicides a day. White males accounted for seven of 10 suicides, in seven out of 10 suicides in 2015. And here's a, here's a startling reality. The rate of suicide is actually the highest in middle-aged white men. But all around this world, men are choosing to quit. Women are choosing to quit. People are literally giving up. We got to have people. The Bible says that when Jesus looked at it and he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. Where's the compassionate people? Where's the compassionate believers? If Jesus lives inside of you and Jesus was moved with compassion, where's your compassion? We got a report even this week of someone that was connected with a family in this church that attempted suicide. Reminders that the issues of life are real. They're real. Families are splitting up all across this world. Divorce is running rampant. Go to the next one. Real issues. And here's a startling truth. What state are we in? Are we not in Alabama? No. We're in Arkansas. And here's a startling truth in Arkansas. Arkansas is among the states where divorce is the most common. I left the source on there just in case somebody wanted to go fact check it. Fourth in the nation in the divorce rate. 
25.3 divorces per 1,000 married, um, married couples, married women, recorded last year. That's why, people of God, somebody's got to stand. That's why, people of God, somebody's got to somebody's gotta get up. Stay. Somebody's got to look at their family and say, I don't care. We're going to pray. If God's house is a house of prayer and I'm a son or a daughter of God, then my house is going to my house is going to be a house of prayer. Because it's not happening. A straw miss is not happening on my watch. But how do we get here? We get here because of how people think. We get here because of how people think. Where you are in life, is, is, it is predicated. But where you are in life is set completely based on how you think. In Proverbs, it says that as a man thinketh in his heart. So whether you're rich or poor, whether you are um, um, diagnosed with sickness or walking in healing. And, 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 and the thing about um, having success and significance and achievement, it has nothing to do with your age. To show you um, um, videos of five and six-year-olds under the influence and the power of the Holy Spirit, preaching and speaking the gospel of Jesus Christ, laying hands on people, healing the sick. But it's all in how they think. I've been in countries where um, they believe that the dead can rise. I've been in atmospheres where people believe um, that blind eyes can open up and see. I, I've been places where um, people that didn't have the ability to speak, but there was enough expectation and belief in those atmospheres that the deaf began to speak. It's all in how people think. I know people that... Um, are millionaires. And I know people that can barely rub two nickels together. And oftentimes, the nickel rubbers work harder than the millionaires. I know people that make um, hundreds of thousands of dollars every year and still struggle living check to check. I know a man that's on a fixed income, government subsidized, that, has, that helps a person get on their feet at least one every year. I watched the same man for over a year contribute to the life of an infant in another country for a full year. It's how you think. We've got we've to we've shift how we think because it's our thinking that will keep us in a place um, of defeat or it's our thinking that, that will come upon us and our thinking will tell us, you know what, you can be you better than this. God ordained more for you than this. God said that you can have more than this. So what? Stand up. Rise above whatever it is that's attempting to hold you back. I know I'm talking to somebody this morning. Pull it, because you need it. And I got it to give. Hallelujah. So get up. Rise up. Stand up. Man, whatever that thing is, what I see down there at the floor, that's defeat. I see divorce. I see lack. I see low self-esteem. I see, God, am I good enough? I see I want more. I desire more. But glory be God. Rise above your defeat. It's within you to do it, child of God.
There's three men in the Bible that live significant lives. And it wasn't based on their age. It was based on um, a word, a spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It was based on a spirit. Hallelujah. A spirit that's here for you to draw on this morning. That if you will draw this spirit and make it yours this morning, your life will never be the same. If you'll draw on this spirit this morning that's here and, and, and you personalize it. The Bible doesn't say as a man thinks in his head. It says as he thinks in his heart. If you'll draw this spirit into your heart this morning, you'll never waste another day in your life. If you'll draw on this spirit that's here this morning, hear me and hear, and hear me good. That the thing that God has ordained uh, for your life, you cannot achieve it and do it without this spirit. But the spirit is right here this morning. Courage. 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 Courage is a spirit. Courage isn't a person, it's not a thing, it's not an it. You can't go around the corner and, and look on the shelf in Walmart and find courage. But the giver of courage is here this morning. And all I want to tell you is take courage. Stand. Believe God. Take courage and stand. I remember in 2011, we were here in this ministry, and we were serving God. Man, man, we were on fire for God. Me and my wife, my son, my daughter, man, every time something was going, we were here. We were serving and rolling. I mean, if, if there was an opportunity to go serve food, uh, uh, to go help people, whatever it was. Kids up here early in the morning, I'm rubbing sleep out of their eyes. Give them a donut, they'll be okay. You know, a donut fixes everything. <laughs> but we were rolling, and the blessings of God on our jobs were coming in. Both me and my wife getting promoted on the job. Increases coming in. Checks in the mail. Nice homes. Rolling. Had just come back from Africa in 2010 where we were over there serving um, the people in Africa and healing the blind. Rolling. Full of courage. Full of strength. Man, you couldn't tell us nothing. Because we were, we had set, we had set our hearts desire to do and believe and trust God. And then in March of 2011, right in the middle of, of doing all, right, man, we were serving. We, we were, even that night, we had people over from, our, from the church. Serving them in our home. Kids playing, serving. In the midst of serving God. And our son collapses in the backyard. A house full of prayer warriors. He collapses. And never recovers. So then, so then, what do you do? Come on, children, what do you do, son of God? What do you do, man of God? Man, you're, you're talking all this stuff. And here your child is laid out on a gurney. Does it take a blow? Man, it was a tremendous blow. But at some point, 
you go get in your prayer closet. If you got to go walk outside and scream, you go walk outside and scream. If you got to get on your knees, if you got to worship, whatever you got to go do, man, you find the strength to get up and stand. And you take courage. And you say, God, if you're God, then be God in this situation. And whatever it is, God, that you're desiring, whatever it is that you're hoping for, you don't quit. Can your thinking go to, um, well, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe God's not there. Yeah, it's your thinking. It's your thinking. You stand. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse number 4 through 8. Jeremiah chapter 1. Y'all get ready to come up here and give your testimonies in just a minute. Let me run through these scriptures. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse number 4. Then the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you as a prophet to the nation. Verse 6 says, Then I said, then said I. This is Jeremiah speaking back to God. O oh God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to Jeremiah, Do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you. And wherever I command you, you shall speak. Verse 8 says, do not be afraid of their faces, for I, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Leave that verse up there. Um, praise God. Help me, Holy Ghost. How do you want to do this? I yield to what you want to do, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 A young man asked me this weekend, how do you know God? Who is God? Um, something along those lines. And um, I reminded him what, what God told Moses. God told Moses, when Moses, when God had told Moses that he needed to, to go to Pharaoh, and, and Moses said, well, who do I tell them sent me? Um, and, and God says, you tell them, I am. I am who? I am. I'm what? I am. You tell them, I am. Hallelujah. Bring that verse. Um, Do not be afraid of their faces. Man, you don't have to be afraid of, 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 of depression. You don't, have, you don't have to be afraid of lack. You don't, have, you don't have to be afraid of the person that wants to run off. Don't be afraid of their faces. You got a bad doctor? Don't be afraid of the doctor. Don't be afraid of the lawyers. Don't be afraid. Why? For I am. Why do I not have? Because I am. I am. I am with you. It could have said, because God, but I am with you. And not only am I, I'll deliver you. 